Hey everybody, this is Joe slash Fizzle CC, and today I'm going to be sharing a brand new Construct 3D template with you on itch that I'm calling Construct 3D Playground. It's going to be showing off some of the newer plugins that are coming online from Kindai Games using the 3D Physics plugin, the Rotate 3D plugin, as well as the pretty established now Object 3D plugin. Inside of this template, I'm going to show how you can use all three of them inside of a 3D platformer. And I'm also going to show how you can do a player controller and also have a 3D camera controller working alongside of you inside of that environment. The template's going to be available totally for free. Some of these plugins do cost some money, but I think they're totally worth it. So go and support Kind Eye Games. With that said, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so here we are on Kind Eye Games' itch page, and these are the three plugins that we're talking about. The fairly established 3D object plugin, which has some great examples built in. If you already have this, fantastic. Construct 3 Rotate 3D Behavior, pretty much brand new. Uh, it's available totally free. This was community funded. Go and grab it. This is going to work in conjunction with Construct 3 3D Physics. This is paid, um, but in the last three or four weeks, there's actually been a ton of development on here where Kind Eye Games has already added quite a few capabilities to the plugin for Construct 3. So leveraging all three of these, we can actually start to make some pretty cool things inside of Construct 3. So let's see what I've come up with and what you guys are going to be able to download. All right, so we have a three-dimensional level. All right, and we can actually move the camera. Fantastic. I've kind of got myself in the way of this little hotkey. It says toggle controls. If I push C, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what can we do? W, A, S, D to move. I can strafe. I can use my mouse to look around and I can move while doing that. If I use the right mouse button, I can move my character relative to where I'm looking. So that's pretty cool. I'm trying to make it somewhat World of Warcraft-esque. And then I can zoom in and I can zoom out. So awesome. And oh, one more thing as it relates to the camera. Let's go jump over here. Look at this. Boom. All right, so for those of you familiar with WoW controllers, this is you know, kind of how they work um, for the camera. Uh, it will zoom in closer to the character. If you cut out a view, it'll just kind of pop right there. So that's what I've done. All right, so what else we got going on? We can jump, we can go upstairs so we can handle slopes. Uh, we've got 3D physics going on with these barrels. Let's go see what that looks like. All right, so coming up through here. All right, yeah, get all the way, barrels. We don't, we don't like that. See if we can push some of these things off the map. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Oh no! Oh, oh okay, I got a few. <laughs> all right, so this is this is what we're making. <laughs> so as you can see, you see we've got a 3D platformer, and uh, you know what? We've got a player controller, we've got a camera controller, and we've got a layout, and we've got some physics going on. So this is pretty cool. All right, so here we are inside of the project file. If we go ahead and zoom on in, this is what the layout actually kind of looks like. So inside of Construct 3, we've got, you know, our demo scene, we've got this repo. And if you look here in the demo scene, it's like, all right, I got all this stuff going on. I got these yellow boxes. What's what's going on here? Well, the way I've organized this is if you look inside of the repo here, I've organized these free assets from Kenny, his mini dungeon pack, and I've grouped them underneath this parent sprite which is really just the parent of this 3D Collider, which has the Canon 3D physics on it and the Rotate 3D plugin on it. Those are gonna work together, remember, as well as the 3D Object plugin, which is uh, reflected here. And the way that I structure that, this is so in my event sheet code, I can go and see between the parent, I can get from the Collider back to the 3D object, and it lets me kind of abstract it with a layer. So once you have that organization, you can actually come in here and start quickly building out your level. Um, I like to use different layers because it helps me keep track inside the Z how I'm laying this out. Um, as you kind of go down, it's kind of hard to see and move things around if you don't do something like this. This is why I do wish that we had a 3D camera in the editor in Construct 3. Maybe one day we will have that soon. Um, but for right now, this is uh, what I do to get around it. Not ideal, but it works. Um, I do have a few effects going on here with the different layers, which gives me this fog and all this other stuff. But um, this is the layout, and this is kind of how I like to set it up for my little uh, scene here. So now let's go over to the event sheet and see what's going on over there. Let's go into the main event sheet where we just do some simple handling. So let's get rid of the debug. 3D object, this is just some simple unloaded stuff. There's this new feature called Quaternion, which uh, you wanna enable for your 3D objects that you're gonna have 
to set the rotation to relative to the 3D rotate plugin. So I do that because I'll show you this here on those barrels. Uh, kind of make kind of games made it really easy to integrate. So if you did something like this, you can use this set quaternion to the rotate 3D quaternion, and the 3D model will automatically rotate in conjunction with whatever the 3D uh, rotate model's quaternion is that it's um, currently at. And it also has an offset. So as the box rotates, your 3D model can rotate too. That's what that does. So that's fantastic. Now let's go take a look at player. I'm, I'm not gonna really uh, go into this in detail. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is a con player controller and we've got different inputs mapped to how you can influence the controller. It's using custom movement for the X, Y, and Z. Um, what I will say is that you can go into the player and set, here we go, all of these variables to kind of fine tune it. So you can set the jump force, the max speed, you can set the gravity force, the max step height. So if you've got like steps in your game, that defines like, will it just stop or will it keep climbing? So you can do a lot of stuff with this controller. Um, and this is something I continue to want to improve along the way. But the kind of key thing is, is that this controller for controlling its X, Y, and Z and interaction with the world, it uses all ray casts from the physics plugin. So I want to go and show this on the ground Z check. So how do I know where I'm at in the world from a Z? Um, that's always been kind of a thing in Construct 3 is how do I know that? Well, what I'm doing here is I'm actually casting rays straight down from the player. So if I come into the scene here and let me take these boxes here and turn on their visibility and let's hit play. What I'm doing is, is from each of these points, I'm constantly shooting rays down about a thousand units and it returns to me what the worst case uh, Z is or the max Z. So I kind of all, always know underneath me, like what Z I'm, I'm at on those five points. So that's how I'm accomplishing this. And I'm using the new plugin to do that, which is really cool. Oh, I love that part. All right, let's come back here. So I'm doing that for both the Z check. And then I also have a wall check where I am doing this as well. I did use JavaScript here. I tried to comment it out as best I can. There is a fair amount of math going on, but what I'm really trying to do in this map is I wanted to make sure that when I'm going along the surface of a wall, I wanted the speed along that wall to be equal to the vector of, let's just show it here, of the angle um, along there of your current movement direction. So if I'm only slightly facing to the left, I'm gonna go really slowly to the left. But the more I change that angle, the faster I'm gonna go along that wall. So I can, you know, there we go. So that's what that whole block of code is trying to figure out for me. And I'm using ray casts to do that and returning kind of like where my resulting X and Y should be. There's a lot of stuff going on in that block of code, but feel free to digest it on your own time. The next thing I want to talk about is the camera. So this camera is using the spherical coordinate system, which you can look up here. And really the way that this thing is defined is using your azimuthal, uh, your polar and your radius. And with that, you can define where in the world your camera is. And I'm constantly just going to be looking at the player. So if I come back here, all these these kind of sections of code is I allow the, the player to have some offset control. Like if I'm clicking with my mouse and dragging it, I want to make sure that I enable them to create this offset for both polar and azimuthal. So like I can drag my mouse and look where I want to. And then I also want to be able to zoom in and out with my mouse to control how far away I am with the, the radius. And that's kind of what's going on here. The look is really simple. It's my player's X and Y and the Z elevation plus an offset for where the kind of the eyes are. So you want to look where the eyes of the player is. And then you kind of come in here and you do the rest of the math to account for that offset. So you really kind of want it to be, there's a few things kind of going on here that are nuanced to, to handle some edge cases. But this is a lot of work that I had already done a lot of previously in a previously uh, done attempt for 3D camera. <laughs> um, and I improved it to kind of match the World of Warcraft feel. And then ultimately I convert it back to the Cartesian X, Y, and Z. And that's where I place the 3D camera. And then I set the look point to the X, Y, and Z. Look X, look Y, look Z. And there we go. So everything else here is just some utilities and helpers. Some of them I'm not even using anymore. So you got your camera controller, your player controller, 
You've got a fun repository of 3D models, and we've made our demo scene. And most importantly, we're incorporating the new plugins to do all that fun work. All right, everybody. Well, I'm really excited about some of these new features that are coming online for 3D inside of Construct 3. Uh, go ahead and grab them from uh, Kind Eye Games. Great developer. He's pushing the boundary on what we can do inside the engine. And, um, you know, I love Construct 3, but I also love when people are able to push the boundaries, especially in the 3D side. I think it's really cool. Uh, this game does run around 50 to 60% CPU on a pretty decent computer, which I have. Uh, so it's, you know, able to be played, but you can't do huge massive worlds. And it's really important that you optimize your physics. Um, I didn't touch on it here, but there's something called filtering groups, which can have a big impact on how you optimize your game for physics if you're going to use that. This is available for free on itch. Go download it, give it a play, incorporate it in your games. If you make something cool with it, you know, let me know in my Discord or shoot me something uh, over on, uh, on itch. And with that said, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye.